Alright, so working on the second cylinder, I already have one ring uh, circlip installed. And what you want to do is you want to have them installed downwards, so the open part goes downwards, always. So, so when, is, when you're installing the rings in a two-stroke, you're, you're going to see these little, little notches in there. And that's where you want to line up the, your ring gaps because they're like that so that when the engine is running they don't catch on all the ports so make sure when you're putting your piston on your rod that you have these this arrow usually points always to the exhaust side if you're not sure just put it on one way and see where your ring gaps are if they're at a port you, you're going to need to turn the piston around because they will they will catch when the engine is running on those ports. You want to lube everything up nice and good and install your cage bearing. Get all the oil worked in there. And grab your piston. Actually, I'm going to put a cloth on here so that nothing falls. Because if we do that, we're pretty fucked. like that. Over here. So we got our piston arrow pointing to the exhaust side. Just lower that over there. Put in our wrist pin. Just gotta find it. with this stuff is to always be patient and take your time. So I'm going to push, push the wrist pin all the way through until there. Now you're going to take your circlip. So you're going to start with the top and you're going to push in with, from the sides. can be a bit tricky because they're in there pretty hard. So you need to use a lot of force usually just to push them in. But never use any sharp objects to push them in. Alright. There we go. Now we're ready to put our cylinder on. So next, we're going to put a oil all in the cylinder. I usually just put it on with my finger, it's good enough. Make sure you get the skirts of the cylinder wall too. You also want to do your piston. Well, I do. Not everybody does. Just a nice thin coat. Not too thick, you don't want it to be all dripping all over the place. Especially your rings. And yes, you definitely want to have clean hands when you do this. So, oh yeah, always remember replace all your gaskets. Don't cheap out because you're going to regret it later sometimes. So we want to start with the top ring. I'm just going to ease it on slowly and make sure your rings, ring gaps line up with those, those stoppers on the piston. 
one ring at a time. Nice and easy, don't force anything. Mm -hmm. Like so. As you can see, I just moved it down, and you can see where the gap is in the ring. You see how they don't they line up with the walls and not they do not go through any ports. You just double check that. So this is good. Gonna add a little bit more oil in there on both sides. Little oil never hurt anything. All right. So your jug bolts, if you have any on your engine, separate ones, you want to make sure the threads are all nice and clean, and they should screw in hand tight. Because if they don't screw in hand tight until they see you're going to get inaccurate torque readings on your uh, torque wrench. So I have all my jug bolts in just just snug, a little bit snug. See, I can still can still kind of move the cylinder a bit. So I've done that because I'm going to have to put the head on to line up all the head bolts, make sure that everything goes together. There's there's actually things you can buy. It's just like a, uh, it's like a template almost, so that you don't have to do that, but you know. I also forgot to mention that uh, when you're doing your rings, make sure to take your time because they can break. And also, uh, your bottom ring has writing on it, and the writing always goes up. So when torquing the jug bolts, you want to do a crisscross pattern or an X pattern like that and the same thing here you want to go that one that one that one and then that one so when we do it we want to like this is 21 foot pounds and we want to do it in two stages so we're going to start with 10 and then go to 21 so right now I have this cylinder torqued at 10 foot pounds I'm probably going to go to 15 for all the bolts and then I'm gonna go the full 21. Here it is with all the new gaskets, the uh, head gasket and the outer pressed stone gasket seal. So now it's time for the head. So I have the uh, head nuts in place. Um, once again they should tighten hand tight until they're snug. If not you should probably look into maybe uh, purchasing new nuts because the threads may be worn and um, I'm probably going to do these in increments of seven foot pounds per stage so I'll probably do about three stages up until 21 foot pounds and with these head bolts you're supposed to retorque when after the engine has run for the first time and everything has cooled down so I'm going to get to it. There is also a uh, torquing pattern or sequence you have to follow. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That is the pattern you're supposed to follow when you torque the bolts. So I have all the head bolts on, or head nuts I should say and they're all torqued to 21 foot pounds. Now I just have to get the manifold on and install all the gaskets. 